Hey guys, Brent Porcio at topvelocity.net. I want to do this video on a topic called distraction forces versus energy flow. So when we pitch, specifically when we go to high velocity, we start putting a lot of forces on the body. The problem is we have a pattern of injury. So we know specifically when it comes to torques, which are those rotational forces, that that can start to damage the arm. You might not even notice it, but later on in your career, all of a sudden you start dealing with severe arm problems. And it could have been through years and years of that abuse. Uh, I did a great interview with uh, Jim Morris a while back. He's the guy they did the movie The Rookie about. And he had nine arm surgeries. They don't talk about that in the movie. Uh, you should listen to the interview. It's great. They took out 80% of his deltoid. The guy still threw 100 miles an hour. Now, d the, supposedly the story goes that he told is the doctor told him after I think his fifth arm surgery, that all the damage he had done to this, his arm at that point in his life happened, he believed, before he was 15 years old. So it is good to throw, but if we put too high amount of these forces on our body, it could be detrimental to our careers. It could completely shorten our career. For example, I tore my rotator cuff at 18 years old in my first college appearance. And more than likely, that's because of all those years of ab abuse up to that point, which dramatically shortened my career as a pitcher. So I want you to understand what, how we can best increase performance without destroying our body in the process because that is a real balance and a real challenge in our big focus with top velocity. So to understand that, you need to understand distraction forces versus energy flow. What are distraction forces? Basically, forces, uh, a force that is moving or distracting away from the body. So any force that is pulling away from the body um, you know, is, is, wouldn't, is a force we have to use, but it's a force that if we're using too much of that, that typically can be where a lot of the injury is, is coming from. Where would common distraction forces occur in the body? That would be, for example, when the arm cocks back, specifically if you're early trunk rotating, that means your, your glove side and your chest is going forward, but the arm might still be going back. So you're distracting specifically the shoulder joint, even the elbow joint. So you're creating these opposing forces uh, in those joints, which is where the torques start to get really high and that's where we can really damage ourselves. So obviously learning how to not early trunk rotate as the arm is going back, learning how to reduce those distraction forces and tap into what we call energy flow, which would be more effective. What is energy flow? Energy flow is just moving energy through your body, kind of like, like a hose, like if it was water flowing energy through the body. And I even like to think of it like um, if I'm playing pool, right? Energy would flow would be if here's my pool stick. So think of this, this is like my leg and say that is my hip socket, or this could be my arm and that could be the ball, or this could be, you know, my hip to my shoulder and this could be my arm. Either way, if I apply a force, right? If I apply a force to the ball, that energy goes from the, 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 stig, the, the limb or the stick into the ball. And that energy flows and now is in that ball. We can do that in the body. We can push forces what we know out of the ground, potential energy, ground forces. And we can push that through the tibia, which will then push through the femur, which will then push through the pelvis. Will then push through the spine from the lumbar to the thoracic to the cervical spine. Ultimately there, we then transfer it into the humerus through the scaps and then into the forearm to the hand and then into the ball. So that flow of energy is critical. Think about it. If, if I create a great flow of energy, I don't have to really create a lot of distraction forces or that, you know, what they call the catch up where one part of your body goes this way and that elastic stretch back and then your arm tries to catch up. I could create less of those because I'm actually pushing the energy from the ground up better. Now that's really what we want to do well. And that's what top velocity is trying to teach what you do. That's the purposes of sequencing the kinetic chain. If you ever hear those terms is to create better energy flow, because here's the problem with distraction forces. Once again, if I took this rubber band and I just pulled on it all day long, right? Eventually, I'm going to have a dead rubber band. It's going to have no elasticity. It's going to be shredding apart. And ultimately, that's what's happening to our bodies. So 
go back to that analogy I was saying with the early trunk rotation. If I'm pulling the trunk early, right? So if I'm pulling this trunk through early like this in Jimmy here, okay? And it's forcing me into rotation early, but that was at a bad time, right? I didn't sequence well, where my arm is cocking back this way while this is pulling that way, right? Then you're going to have forces working against each other. This force going this way, this force going that way, creating a lot of stretching and a lot of torques opposing each other. And you, typically, where is the injury going to be? Wherever the, the, the joint that is fighting a force this way to a force that way. For example, if I'm in that early trunk rotation, there's a big force of the shoulder to come around with the glove. But if the arm is going back, then there's a big force of the humerus to pull back into that cock position. Well, that can create velocity, right? Because like the rubber bands, it can spring out of that effect, right? If the rubber bands, say, is representing my muscles, right? When this goes back, it stretches and then, boom, it fires. And we even hear coaches coach with this. Coaches will actually coach you to stretch and fire, right? You, velocity is there, but the problem is that's where all the stress is. That's where all the injury is. So how do we do this better? Is we obviously want to balance out the ability to flow the energy, pump the energy out of the ground, push it through what's called the proximal segments of the body, sequence it effectively through the kinetic chain, and distribute it evenly into the ball. And if there is, we are using those elastic movements, you know, specifically the one we, we see a lot in pitchers is external rotation, right? Where the arm, when it gets up and the trunk opens up and it lays back, well, that's a stretching force. But here's the question. Do we want to yank on that and overemphasize that? Or we do, we want the energy flowing through that movement. And there is some elasticity to multiply the forces, but it's not overpowering in those movements to where the stress is just way too high. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to learn how to build adequate amount of ground force as we push and drive and break and stabilize. And we want to sequence that, move it like, like the ball, like the pool stick or like a flow of water, move it through the body. That's also what creates the smoothness in a pitcher's delivery. And it also creates the fact that it doesn't even look like they're throwing that hard, but they are. And any type of loading and unloading, any type of elastic movement is just enough to get that enhancement of energy without having to overload that position and create too much trauma and stress. So if you're in a methodology that's trying to emphasize intensity through those distraction forces, those loading and unloading forces, or those, you know, like some of them say that creating a sling right forces. If there's too much emphasis there and too much intensity and aggressiveness there, I would highly recommend you stop because that is the, those are going to be the exercises or the training or even the days of pitching where you're going to do the most damage to your career. Okay. So re really pay attention to that. Pay attention to how you train. Are you tapping in, into energy flow and sequencing? Are you tapping into more of the distraction and the torque? and the elastic uh, slingshot effects of the movement. And let's try to balance those. Ideally, people don't use energy flow well. So let's try to always emphasize energy flow, creating more ground forces, sequencing the body, distributing it well to the ball. And what's gonna happen is you potentially will always throw harder the better you get at it and the more energy you pump through it. But ultimately, you're going to not shorten your career as you work to enhance your performance, your velocity, your spin. That's the, that's the key, right? A lot of guys obsess so much about velocity, they forget about the fact that what comes with velocity is stress. And that in the obsession of velocity, you can ruin your career, which makes no sense. You sought velocity to increase the years in your career, to increase the opportunities in your career. But the problem was in the process, you didn't pay attention to the dangers that come with it and it actually shortened and ended your career. That's a sad moment for guys that realize that too late. So I hope I can get to you and to those guys that are doing that to understand that you have to take a better, more intellectual approach to this, understanding what we're talking about here with energy flow to those distraction forces. And if you don't do this right, and to, to not only just be effective in getting the performance results you want, 
but if you don't do it right, you could wind up destroying the one thing that you were hoping to enhance and improve and bloom is your baseball career. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions on that, could have been too complicated for you, that's cool. Uh, ask the questions. We love to answer and fill in and help you better understand this, uh, this methodology.